way to to illustrate yes, to illustrate and to make, to make the person uh, like imagine or you describe something you describe an information or you give more information about it you illustrate so we are going to talk uh, next about the tips of effective writing what are the tips of effective writing the first tip of course is reading if you don't read don't write okay just don't continue and uh, I know that uh, we have uh, sometimes we don't have time sometimes uh, some uh, students uh, in the PhD students they work sometimes some uh, PhD students they have family they are married or something they have children so it's life okay but you need to to make time for reading and read a lot in your field read a lot of articles and read a lot of thesis okay in order to help yourself come out with the, the way how of course you have ideas okay and when you read there are other of course other strategies of reading so when we talk about why do you find uh, uh, english difficult because you don't use strategies because when you read you just read you have an article or paper or something and you read it and remember that uh, people humans they don't remember everything we remember just 20 to 30 percent of what we read okay so you read when you read use strategies there are lots of strategies and this is another we need another workshop about about this about strategies so for example take notes highlight uh, if you use uh, your tablet or your mobile, use uh, some applications, there are some applications of highlighting and so and so, and sometimes change. If you read a lot, uh, for example, when you are sitting in your desktop or using your, your, uh, your uh, computer, your personal computer, or your laptop, your tablet, try to change. Sometimes print. You have, an, uh, you have a good article that you find. <coughs> So print it and read it in a hard copy. That's better than using your computer or tablet. So as we said, reading a lot, it means to learn something, you must, you must see and <coughs> in order to know how it should be done and how it should not be done. So when you read, you know, this is the way how I, I should do it and this is the way, this is what I should do and this is what I should not do. And you learn from the mistakes of, of others, because we are humans, we make mistakes, of course. The second uh, tip to effective writing, it means what is the message? What is the message you want to sell? Okay, well, because we are, we are writing a paper, it means it's like you're similar. So what is the message that you want to sell? Think about it. The third tip, who is the audience? So people are going to read uh, my uh, paper, what are they? And you have uh, just an example of pictures, you see different uh, people from different, uh, different fields, people from different regions. So you have to adjust your message, tailor your style, you know what is tailor? Tailor your style and prepare yourself for potential criticisms based on the target audience of course people will criticize you this is normal when you do something you find people who criti criticize your work okay yes and uh, especially in rural the first thing is to criti criticize and this is uh, uh, we notice all of us we notice this when you write a note when it is rejected okay have you experienced this you send an article and after three or four months they send you a reply rejected okay so when you see the message most articles European American articles what do you do they give you the, uh, in the beginning positive things about your article so your article has this it's good yes it's new in the field it talks about new culture new country new findings and so and so and then they come to negative things but 
For example, the introduction lacks this and this and this. Okay? And they say, we are sorry, we will reject you. But they give you, uh, in the beginning, they give you positive things. And we should learn from this. You want to criticize, start with the good things. Okay? You find someone, for example, for teachers of English, you find something, someone who doesn't speak English very well, you say, yes, English is good, you know, you know some vocabulary, your pronunciation is, yes, it's good, but, and then you can do a negative thing, okay? So criticism, try to accept criticism as it is, because we all make mistakes. The fourth tip to effective uh, writing, no matter what, keep clear writing. Always try to keep clear writing, and because clear writing, that is incapable of being misunderstood. If you can just try to understand this quote, clear writing that is incapable, incapable of being misunderstood. It means you make people understand, you try to write things that people will understand. So the fifth tip to effective uh, writing, do not mistake. Do not mistake the tree for the forest. Can someone explain this to me? Do not mistake the tree for the forest. So we are writing a paper. You don't know, you should not mistake the tree for the the forest. What is the difference between the tree and the forest? Yes, of course. So if you take uh, an information or anything from another article, just try to, um, to mention it, to say that uh, it's from this country or other country. Yes, this is about referencing. Yeah. This is about referencing, but we, here we are talking, talking about uh, effective writing. It means uh, about uh, like your audience, okay? About uh, who are you writing uh, this paper to, okay? So it's about the audience most of the time, about the people who will read your, your paper. So that's why I do not mistake the tree for the forest. Why? Because of course the focus will be on the focus or the goal. It for, is for, for what? What is your goal? Is your goal the, fo the, the tree or the forest? Of course, the goal is the forest. Okay? It means when you write, don't focus on one person. For example, I write just for my uh, supervisor. Okay, I focus only on my supervisor. I want him to or her to accept my work. So I focus only on my supervisor. My supervisor likes this, so I will do it. And I forget about the forest. I, I forget about the other readers. Okay, international readers. Because sometimes you may have opportunities, especially in the scientific fields. When you, re when you write something that is important, you may have opportunities, someone who is interest, interested, in, for example, uh, likes your, your research or doing something the same, you may find uh, an association, you may find government, okay? I, uh, I know some uh, students and uh, teachers who wrote uh, good articles about uh, some problems and they, they, they have been uh, uh, some other people from, I uh, think someone, I know someone from the uh, science, yes, FST, so another teacher who wrote an article about something about, uh, about, uh, about accident and so on, so, so he, he had a call from the French, French uh, government, they called him, we want, yes, we are interested in your information, and uh, we want you to apply your, uh, your work on our country, on our uh, uh, case. Okay, so you may find opportunities. That's why I said that quality writing is, is important. So when, uh, when we are writing uh, articles, we uh, talk about MRAD algorithm. Writing articles, writing papers. We talk about introduction, plus the aim or the purpose methods, results, and discussion. And this is what we call in the scientific research here MRAD algorithm. 
So this is a short uh, algorithm of MRAD, but here it is extended. It means limitations of current evidence and study hypothesis. So these are the most three important elements of an introduction methods. And of course in the introduction we can talk about uh, review, literature review, okay? You mentioned what was, uh, what have been done before in this, uh, in this topic on this fellow. Methods, we talk about design, passions or participants, procedures, follow-up, and points, additional analysis, and statistical analysis. In the results, we talk about the baseline and procedural data, early outcomes, mind to long-term or mid to long-term outcomes, and other additional analysis. In the discussion, we talk about summary of study findings. This is the first thing we start about. We summarize the results. We summarize the findings. Current research context. We talk about the context of our research. Implications and uh, avenue for further we'll talk about further research. Limitations and, of course, conclusions. So these are most important elements. So uh, when, when we write, when you write, you may find uh, sometimes you want to change phrases or sentences, you, you want to change ideas, but never throw away a good sentence. When you have a good sentence, even if it's, you want to change it, keep it, you will need it, uh, for example, next or in another uh, chapter. So. Because why you need to never throw a good or throw away a good sentence? Because there is no good writing. Okay? There is no good writing, only good rewriting. No one writes uh, from the, 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 the first time good uh, writing. So you, you always need to rewrite. That's why when you, you, you write your first draft, when you start writing, just uh, write. Because it's, it doesn't matter if you, if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter if you use uh, something that's, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's not incorrect, but it's not its place. But when you, you revise, you rewrite, you correct your mistakes, you correct your style, and you correct things. Okay? So, rational are better at editing. So we, we are better, the, the, when you write, you are good at, at editing. When you write and uh, you read what you wrote, you know your mistakes. And especially uh, another strategy that you should use while writing, don't always uh, write and uh, revise uh, just from the computer. Try to write and print, okay, because when you read, from the paper you, you find mistakes more than just when you read on the screen okay so write about the same thing and use similar methods these are some uh, strategies or dictation when you are going to write so we will be talking about general tips for uh, scientific writing include one part per sentence so when you want to write, include one idea in a sentence. Don't try to write all your ideas in uh, one sentence. Use one thought, one sentence, one idea per paragraph. So I have an idea, I want to explain it, I use it in one paragraph. That's why you will find yourself that you write long text. You have ideas. And we are going to talk about how to write because you need to outline. We, are not, we don't write just like this. 
I want to write just so I, I write, but we outline. And the, first, the best thing to, to do is to outline each section, okay? Yes, you, you make a, a full outline of your paper, but each se section you put an outline. For example, you are going to talk about a problem, and this is a subheading. It's not uh, uh, the title, but it's a subheading. So you write an outline for the subheading. In the first paragraph or in the introduction, I will talk about this. I will introduce. In the body, I will talk about this idea, this idea, three ideas, okay? Three paragraphs. And then conclusion. So you go this way. It's like, uh, you know what essay is writing? You write when you write an essay. Five paragraph essay. So each section, five paragraphs, five paragraphs. Introduction, body, three paragraph, paragraphs, and a conclusion. That's why you will find yourself that you write uh, quickly and you write good or quality writing because you, you organize. Okay, you don't write just like this. So use active voice whenever possible. Active voice. Better than passive. Yes, we use passive, but sometimes active uh, because uh, in the active voice, you know who is the person or the thing you are talking about. Passive voice, you eliminate the, the person or the subject. Okay, and we, will, we will talk about this 